What's going on, Los Angeles football fans? Welcome in to the LA Football Show, or should I say a special crossover edition, LA Football Show and your favorite Chargers show, Chargers Unleashed. I'm your host, Ryan Diver, joined by the great Dan Wilkinson, the great Jake Hefner. We're talking all things Chargers draft. If you guys aren't sick of it yet, we're the week of the draft. So we're we're not sick of it. it. I'm not sick of it. <laughs> I'm not sick of it. You're sick of it, turn it off. Turn off the show right now. You're sick of it. <laughs> or just let it play in the background. Don't turn it off. Just let it play in the if background. If you are, you came off. to the wrong channel. <laughs> exactly. And uh, I would say this is the last time, but no, we got plenty more all week. So you'll be hearing a lot more from us. But uh, gentlemen, Dan, what's going on, man? How you doing? The hat looks great. You're ready for the draft. I'm ready. I'm ready. I mean, I wish Jake and I were talking about this earlier today. Like, I just wish it was today. Like, I feel like every hour I'm like, I can't take this anymore. But yes. Feeling great. Got a Chargers draft hat on. Uh, highly recommend for folks who are seeing this uh, on YouTube. It looks better in person, but I actually think it also looks great uh, on video too. So yeah, doing good, but I am so ready for Thursday and this weekend. Jake, Before, how you doing, buddy? I can't really lay it on any more than that, Dan. It's, um, I've been wanting it to be this Thursday for the past month. I have told you two weeks ago that these weeks were going to go by so slow because of all the anticipation that we're feeling for this coming Thursday. But this is a huge week, not just for the, for the Chargers, but for the Rams as well. Huge week for the LAFB network. Ryan's going to be down in Vegas. He's going to be actually there at the draft. So he's going to have a great time. Dan and I are going to have Gorilla Glue <laughs> administered to our ass because we're not getting up off the couch. So... <laughs> I'm stoked. I'm pumped. Let's do this. Shout out, shout out Gorilla Goo, the new sponsor of the LA Football Network, apparently. <laughs> so, uh, God, I love that. Speaking of which, let's just get this out of the way. One of the great sponsors of the show, Bet Online, is our betting partner, one of the best in the business when it comes to online sports betting. Um, you know, we've got the NBA playoffs going on. Who's your guys's? Because you guys have any, are you guys Lakers fans? Or no. who's your NBA teams? I'm a Warriors fan. Oh, what? How did that happen? <laughs> I, I guess I lived, you, lived, you lived in the Bay for a while. That's right. I forgot yep. that. Okay. Yep. Jake, who you got? Unfortunately, it's the Lakers. So okay. I'm just sitting back with a stoic grin on my face, but still enjoying the NBA playoffs as they go on. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. you know, I, unfortunately, it's just this year. Lakers are usually a good team to be backing. So I think you're okay there overall. I'm a Nuggets <laughs> fan. So, you know, Nuggets are that team that's just is always seems to be competitive, but can never get past relevancy. Um, but anyway, you can bet on the NBA playoffs. NHL playoffs start, I think, like next week. Avalanche fan here. They're actually the top team in the in the NHL. So stoked on that. Uh, baseball playoffs going. So betonline.ag. Use the promo code when you sign up. Believe, that's B-L-E-A-V. You get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's free money you get for signing up to win money. Can't get better than that. So, all right. Before we move on, though, guys, Dan, I got to ask you. Every year they change up the drafts hat, the draft hats. Can you? Rem- I'm trying to remember the last like four or five years. Can you remember them at all? And if so, which one has been your favorite one? I, okay, okay, so I, I, I distinctly remember last year's because it looked like the Vegas, like I, like um, like street sign almost. Let, like let me look it up while you're talking. Everybody I did said not. It looked like uh, I thought everybody said it looked like the Heinz ketchup logo, yep. or it would look like <laughs> a weird logo of like a trucker hat, though. That yep. it wasn't like it didn't make sense. <laughs> It looked, like, my- it, it looked like the Welcome to Las Vegas sign that you always see somewhere. That's kind uh, of reminded me of. Yes, it was this one, I believe. But I don't remember what it was before that, but I do think this might be – this year's might be my favorite. It was uh, – was it – let me see if I can get this correct. The one this what? year, I just feel like I, I teleported back to 1995. This that's is last what year's, I feel right? with yes, this year. That's, that's, that's last yeah. year's, yes. Yeah, yeah. I will say the one thing I like about this, I'm gonna go Jake. I'm gonna put the backwards hat on here for a second. This one, it actually has a charger bolt on the mm. front side, which I did not know until like yesterday. I was like, oh, nice. I'm gonna go with that. So, do you guys remember? Do you remember the year? What was it? Three or four years ago, when all the team caps did their like hashtag. So it was like bolt up for the Chargers. It was like. Uh, Red Sea for the Cardinals, yep. Broncos country. I remember those got a lot of hate, but I, I kind of like those ones. I don't know why. I thought they were kind of cool. They were kind of cheesy, but kind of cool because it was like a hat you would never buy unless it was a draft hat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, but I think this year they did better of, of actually giving us something that you can wear like to games and stuff. So, um, so Dan Rapid, looking good. You wearing that all, all weekend? Probably. I'm wearing this to bed, wearing the shower, wearing it to pickleball, wearing it everywhere. <laughs> it's got a lot of use. Okay, there we go. All right, gentlemen. So pick 17, 
let's start with this. Uh, we can go through kind of uh, – might as well go through kind of the whole draft since this will be probably the last time us three – us three together talk pre-draft. I think we'll definitely do stuff post-draft or post-rounds for sure, um, recapping kind of what happens. But, uh, Jake, let me start with you. I know you guys have talked about it a bunch. We can get in some player options. But first and foremost, do you think the Chargers stay put at 17, or do you think they have any movement there? Ooh, guns blazing. I like this. I mean, see, you know how to just tug at my heartstrings <laughs> immediately from the get-go, Ryan. Nice job. Um, this all just depends on how the board falls to them. And there are, there's really a lot of different ways that the Chargers could go at 17. Could they be looking to add another weapon for Justin Herbert? Could a Jamison Williams fall at 17? I personally don't see that happening with the way that he's being valued and given the positive uh, reports of him coming back off his injury. Could they go a Chris Olave? Because the one thing they really need is, as far as this offense goes is speed and yak. And both of those guys fill that void for sure. How does the offensive line play out? Dan, there's been Vegas odds now. I mean, there was... I can't remember whose mock draft it was, but four offensive tackles went in the top 10. Four. So yeah. the offensive tackle, why it may end up being the highest priority for the Chargers here easily because they have a gaping void at the right tackle position right now, it just may not end up falling to them. And I really would just hate it if they ended up reaching for a guy that you could get, you know, five, ten picks later, wherever it may be. But you got to read the board properly. And then corner is kind of the other one here that could be a, mm -hmm. uh, a mystery pick. The, uh, Trent McDuffie, who I absolutely love and I think would be mm -hmm. great in Brandon Staley's system. But do you value him, value him that high? And with the acquisition of J.C. Jackson and for the fact that you have Michael Davis and now we're getting reports that the Chargers are not really that high on Michael Davis anymore. So even if you drafted Trent McDuffie and you had this really diverse, talented corner room. Who's going to be the odd man out? The guy who you gave a, a nice contract to last year, or are you going to invest in your first round pick at 17? So honestly, if it's me and if the draft plays out the first 16 picks the way it's supposed to, which it probably won't because we know that there's going to be a, a crap ton of trades, especially before the Chargers end up picking up 17. But I just don't feel that the guys that they want are going to be there. Maybe you have one or two that may be left, maybe have a 20% chance of getting to you at 17. But if that's not the case, again, I'm reading the board, I'm reading the value. And then if that's the case, then I am making the calls and I am moving back a few spots to get the guy that I think values that pick. So let me let me follow up with this before going to Dan on that question. So I'll stick with you, Jake. Um, so let's say chaos ensues like always, and we see let's say even Trevor Penning goes before the Chargers at seventeen. And now let's say that there just isn't the value to trade back five picks. Not the value of who they could get, but the value on who wants to trade up. Maybe no one's like, no, we're not giving you good value to move up. We won't even give you a second round pick. So then it's like, okay, they don't take a tackle. Then they go, let's say, let's say Jamison William Falls or even Jordan Davis or a D tackle. So then you're you're pushing your luck to the third round to probably get a tackle. And there's names like I've talked about, Sean Ryan from UCLA, who I think potentially could be there. I almost like Sean Ryan better than Trevor Penning even. So uh, do you think there's a chance that they just play their cards like that and say, hey, we'll hit this tackle position in the third? Or does it need to be first round tackle or, you know, get second round pick to get that position taken care of, if that makes sense? I mean, I always would enjoy getting your draft capital back from the Khalil Mack trade, which gives you more flexibility and a better chance to obviously acquire a good tackle that you get in an Abraham Lucas in the second round, just to name one off for an example there. But if it's not a tackle, and to your point, if you couldn't get a team to trade down with you, then the Chargers, I think, have other contingencies as it relates to the right tackle position and filling that void. They've talked about moving Matt Filer from left guard to right tackle. They've mm -hmm. talked about the possibility that Zion Johnson is a very good possibility to be in the mix at 17. Now, would that technically be a little bit too high for him? Maybe by about five picks. But if he's your guy and if he's going yeah. to you know, help transcend this offensive line and be extra protection for Justin Herbert, then it really isn't that big a, of, of a swing in that circumstance if that's the guy that you're going to end up selecting. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. And I've always said all along, if it's your guy, who cares when you take him? Like you think, obviously he's on the Chargers now. Do you think the Packers cared they got Corey Lindsay in the fifth round if they would have taken him like in the second round, if he turned out to be an all pro, like who cares what the value is from draft experts? It's he's, if he's your guy. Dan, anything to add on that? You think the Chargers stay put at 17 and just kind of let it play out like like Jake was saying? You know, you, you mentioned chaos ensues, and it always does. But generally speaking, it doesn't really happen for the Chargers. Like, usually they're pretty steady 
there's been a couple times we've seen like the Kenneth Murray trade up, which I think so far we'd all agree hasn't panned out yet. Um, but normally Chargers, Tom Telesco is pretty conservative when it comes to like just stick and pick and going for BPA. This off season, I would argue probably the last two off seasons has been very different from the Chargers. And so like from an aggression standpoint, I'd love it. Chaos ensues, trade up, who cares? Like I know, I know Jake's already shaking his head. I know he does not like to see that, but it comes from a point of like aggression. And you don't necessarily know if like the Chargers are really all in. And if they are, if they think Here, I thought not- you were talking underwater right there. There we go. <laughs> what was that? I was wondering what that was. I don't know what that was. Um, uh, that's fine. That's perfect. Continue. Sorry to cut you off. I just it sounded like we were listening to Little Mermaid for a second. <laughs> um, no, so uh, so do I think they're going to stick at 17? I do. I mean, I think the odds are they do. But personally, and Jake, you're not going to like this, but if I had to put odds of them either trading up or trading back, I think that's more likely that they trade up than they do trade back. Twofold. One, I think there may be a few guys that like are their dudes. And if they see someone falling, they might just say, you know what? Like they're too good. We'll mortgage some of our capital. We'll mortgage some of our future draft picks, whatever, to go get that guy. Because if the guy's there, like you want him. Brandon Staley has been known to kind of go all in on guys like this. But then I think like secondly, you're hearing a lot of talks that like there aren't many teams that are wanting to trade up in this draft. And so there are a ton of teams that want to trade back. Not many want to trade up. And the Chargers have a couple guys that seemingly they love. You saw Stingley and Brandon Staley talking to each other at his pro day. Jason Williams, what's not to like. Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave. You could talk about you know Sauce Gardner, all the tackles. Jordan Davis. Like there are some guys where if they think they're that close after a JC Jackson, Khalil Mack, Sebastian Justin Day, you know, Gerald Everett, they think they're one guy remaining. Trade up. And as much as that pains a lot of folks that want that capital back, imagine if you got that guy and that guy turns out to be the missing piece. Like imagine Jamison Williams trade up to 10. You mortgage, whatever, third round pick, next year's second, I don't know, pick something. And all of a sudden your offense is just like lit fuse and you're just going to score short on everybody. Who, do you how care? do you guys – no, I, I I don't really care. But how do you guys – how do you rank the top three tackles? Let me ask that real quick. Are they, uh, like, are they kind of like 1A, 1B, 1C? You don't have a huge preference of the top three. So, I, so Jake and I believe have ours. I know all three of ours are in this are the same three. They might be mm-hmm. different orders, but for me, um, overall, Evan Neal, Ikemukwanu, and Charles Cross. For the Chargers specifically, I have Charles Cross as my OT one. So, let me ask you this, Jake: How would you feel? And I know you're you're a draft, from what I can tell, a draft guy, draft capital guy. But how would you feel if the Chargers take seventeen and a first next year? and move up in the top 10 and take one of those tackles. Because then they still keep all their their seven remaining picks in this year's draft to keep building out this roster, and you get your two book-in tackles of the future. I mean, that, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't be the worst thing to me to hear that. If you did that for Charles Cross, um, I wouldn't see that as a bad thing. I, I could swallow that. I really could. But yes, I am a draft capital guy. I enjoy having that type of flexibility, which means gives you more opportunity. And here's the problem that I have, because Dan's right and wrong on two folds, because he is saying that it's more likely for the Chargers to trade up based off of sheer history with Tom Telesco. He's done it three times. The Chargers haven't traded down nearly 20 years. So obviously odds are in his favor. But the last three players that the Chargers have traded up to acquire has been Manti Teo, Mm. Melvin Gordon mm. and Kenneth Murray. Mm. Get out <laughs> with that. I don't want it. I don't care what round it is. Don't do it. <laughs> Wait, hold on. So <laughs> Mr. Draft Capital himself is okay yes. mortgaging a 2023 first round pick to move up to get a Charles Cross, but is not okay mortgaging that same thing or less than that to get a Stingley or Williams type. No, 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 hang on a second, Dan. That that wasn't the question, was it? <laughs> that wasn't the question, was it? So to me, it's okay. Look, your most pressing need that you have right now is obviously offensive tackle. I would rather, I would be more comfortable with them. I'd have to. It would it would be a pill that I'd have to swallow 
But if it means that you got that you had to give up a little bit of draft capital to get Charles Cross as opposed to reaching for a Trevor Penning or a Bernard Raymond at 17, I would definitely feel better about that. There's no question about that. But uh, but a Derek Stingley, again, and this is why I say this, if Michael Davis was not on this team right now, that trade would make all the sense in the world. It really would. To me, after acquiring J.C. Jackson, after spending a second-round pick on Asante Samuel Jr. last year, after giving the contract of Michael Davis two years ago, I'm just wondering what eventually is going to happen. Is Michael Davis going to be traded before draft weekend is over? What's going to happen with that scenario? Because are you not going to play the guy that you invested a, a, more than a first round pick in if you trade up to go get him? Or are you going to play the guy that you gave a nice contract to just two years ago? Or are you right. going to medicine him? Right. And you're, and you're not necessarily saying that Michael Davis is the same tier as Derek Stingley, but you're saying no. like, like JC Jackson's obviously going to be corner one. And then from there, what do you do? You just did a second Correct. round pick. Not that's answer. it. And then you have Michael Davis and then you have a Stingley. Like that's, I mean, you right. can never have too many, but yes, I money. get that. But that's all of a sudden, what do you do in that scenario? And to, as you said, I am no way saying that Derek Stingley and Michael Davis are on the same level because obviously I know who I'd be playing when we're coming out there on Sundays. But Michael Davis' situation just kind of convolutes things. It creates more question marks in that circumstance if they traded up for Darren Stingley then it does give me answers. If Derek Stingley somehow is on the board at 17, then you'll get no argument from me. And yeah. that makes all the from sense anyone. in the world. Yes. From anyone. When it comes down to, in the question of trading up two, it comes down to what do you value more, like the number of draft picks or purely first round picks? Because if they trade from this year's class to move up, you figure they're going to have to give, obviously, 17. They'd have to give their third and probably one or two more in those mid. They probably have to give three to four picks to move up. They could probably move up top 10 just by giving two first round picks. And if all plays well, like we think they are, and they're a Super Bowl contender, well, that first round pick is going to be in the high twenties next year. So then it's like, okay, do you value that 28th overall pick where you drafted Jerry, Jerry Tillery four years ago, or do you go get Charles Cross who now is your book in tackle and you're set for the foreseeable future on the offensive line. You don't mess up the Matt Filer and Rashawn Slater chemistry and whatnot. So it's, it's a very interesting um, circumstance that I think would be, I would be okay with, but I, I also cover the Rams who doesn't have a first round pick in seven years and you see how it works for him. So you kind of just have to start thinking that mentality a little bit. Right. You're in the minority for the standpoint that you doing that, the whole F them picks philosophy mm -hmm. has worked out to your guys' benefit. Yeah. It, unfortunately, especially when it comes to the chargers, it definitely doesn't work out for them. <laughs> I, I think the, the conversation that I think most people maybe not know they're having uh, and Jake, I'd love to get kind of your thoughts on this too. And Ryan, you haven't, you haven't talked to this at all. Like, I think everyone has like their, their favorites, right? Like everyone has like, oh my gosh, if Jameson Williams is there or oh my gosh, if Derek Stingley was there or oh my gosh, if Jordan, did, like whatever. But like, when does the breaking point come from like the guy you're picking at 17 is actually the best player available and when is it that you are then picking to hopefully like fill a need that your team has, but it might still be a reach that you're comfortable with. So like, as an example, like if Charles Cross is there at 17, you race it in. If Stingley is there, you race it in. Mm -hmm. um, but let's say, I don't know, Penning, right? You talk about Penning or let's say like a Chris Olave, right? Would those picks be BPA at 17? I would argue no. But there are some who would say that's enough value that you're getting to where is it a bit of a reach? Sure, but they're going to make enough of an impact to where I get it. Now, some people might not be as warm and cozy to Trevor Penning as Alave, but I think we have to kind of come down to like right, what is the realistic home run picks versus what's the realistic I'm comfortable with the stretch. Yeah, you want me to start? Do you want to go? Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah. No, I, I, it's, a, it's a very interesting, I wouldn't even say argument, but just a, a um, decision-making process of what it comes down to. And, and if that's kind of the thought of value at that pick or positional value at that pick, to me, and you guys could completely disagree with this, but I don't know why 
Devin Lloyd isn't getting more talk to the Chargers because Devin Lloyd is far and away the best backer and solves that linebacker issue. And I keep seeing so many people saying, well, Brandon State doesn't value linebackers. Brandon State doesn't value linebackers. To me, that's more about in the free agency and the spending roster building area, not necessarily the draft building area, because obviously you have to have an athletic linebacker to run this defense to an extent. Obviously, he's been able to prove with him and in Fangio through the years that they can get by with lesser talent. And they, they, as long as they have an impressive secondary, they can kind of disguise it and mask it. But having a linebacker of that capability obviously just gives you more versatility, gives you more options that you can do with your defense. We saw Chicago um, draft the kid out of uh, Georgia back when Vic Fangio and Brandon Staley were both there. Um, uh, not the year after Leonard Floyd, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. Um, maybe you guys can remember. Uh, what is it? Uh, I don't remember. Ray Sean. I'll, I'll think of it. But they drafted him eighth overall. I think it was like the year after Leonard Floyd in the middle, and that was Brandon Staley and Vic Fangio on that staff. And obviously, this kid's been a, a very good linebacker for Chicago. So kind of going with that question of positional value versus reaching for what we think is the need. I mean, I think linebacker is a need right now. If you're rolling into the season with Drew Tranquil and Kenneth Murray as your two starting backer spots, Brandon Staley wasn't there when they drafted Kenneth Murray. If Dev- Devin Lloyd's there, I just think it should be getting a little more talk. I'm not saying he is necessarily my pick. Roquan Smith. Thank you, Dan. Roquan Smith was a the kid they drafted. Um, so I don't know your guys' thoughts on that or if that even was the answer you were looking for. Uh, but that's kind of my thought is I... I I'm think if, this, this, if this board goes crazy, I think Devin Lloyd could end up being get, getting more look than a lot of, I guess, podcasters and Tartar's Twitter is, is giving credit for. Brace yourself, Ryan. <sighs> Let's hear it. First of all, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now because the Chargers could have conceivably made this decision very easily for them to say linebacker's not even a need if they would have given enough money to a certain linebacker that will not be named because he is no longer with us and is happily sitting in the Philadelphia Eagles locker room right now for pennies. With the, by the way. <laughs> right. Pennies. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you could you have so easily solved you. this problem. Unfortunately, now you're stuck in a very bad scenario with a linebacker that played a lot of last year injured that I said to Dan for the longest time coming up before free agency even started Tom Telesco is really going to let Kaiser White walk because he put himself in a corner because of the value that he invested in trading back up into the first round to acquire Kenneth Murray to then have him as his starter to say, well, we spent the picks on him. We're going to have, we actually, we have, we have to have him out there. So what are we going to do? And now it's in an even worse situation from the standpoint that we just hear the reports today that Kenneth Murray may not even be ready by the start of training camp goes because of his ankle surgery. So what are you going to do? Ryan, to your point, absolutely. Linebacker is a need for the chargers. I cannot see them going (laughs) three years, almost two quarters of the way to go full Matt Millen that you take almost three, <laughs> you take two out of the three years, you take an off ball linebacker in each of those years. You can't do it. It's just, do I see them taking a linebacker? Yes. Maybe with pick 79 and beyond, you could fill that void. Hope to God that uh, Kenneth Murray can come back and be healthy and obviously productive in his third year here. But the chargers really have put themselves in a bad position as it relates to linebackers. I'm actually terrified when it comes to that position group, what it may look like by the time training camp rolls around. Yeah, good. I don't know, Dan, if you had a, a, a requisite answer to that too. No. Um, what I Do I think Devin Lloyd would be awesome on the Chargers? Like, yes. Every team in the NFL would be better if they had Devin Lloyd. Um, I do think the optics of that would not be great for the Chargers. Now, Brandon Staley could just be, could be like, you know what, screw it. I don't care. I wasn't there for the optics a couple years ago. This is my pick. And could go for Devin Lloyd. But it just, it just wouldn't make sense to me to go linebacker when you already have a Drew Tranquil and you just let go of Kaiser White. You brought in the, I forget the Rams guy that he brought in. and Troy Reader. Troy, Troy Reader. Reader. And you have those glaring holes at corner wide receiver and right tackle. And you can argue possibly interior defensive line as well. Like in a scheme in which you rarely see more than two linebackers play in a given snap at all for the chargers, a branch daily scheme. So normally it's like one, maybe two linebackers. 
You already mm-hmm. got Drew Tranquil who's there. Kenneth Murray is going to come back at some point. You got Reader. In terms of just sheer impact, is a linebacker going to impact this team as much as other positions? I'd argue no. And therefore, I just don't see it. But he'd be good on the team. Like, I mean, he'd be great. Mm-hmm. I, I'd be fine with it. Yeah, it's 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 such an interesting thing because I think if, if that were to, to happen, which again, I'm not saying it will, I just think it has a little more relevancy than I think a lot of people are saying. And here's also why, you know, you look at Kaiser White, who had a breakout season for the Chargers, obviously became beloved. Um, but when you just look, and again, PFF grades are subjective, but when it comes to the run defense specifically, which is what in a Staley defense that one linebacker is re- main responsibility right in the middle there kaiser white graded out at like a 62 whereas devin lloyd obviously it's college graded out over 82 so i mean it's it's a pretty substantial difference against the run specifically which i think is why they ended up letting kaiser white go again i don't i think he was worth keeping for 1.5 million but um you know it, but yeah i would agree with you the the needs at right tackle are probably greater but if if the top five tackles are already gone no one's wanting to trade back with them and you have it and you know Jamison Williams is gone and these top receivers and you're looking at kind of an interesting segue there and Devin Lloyd sitting there. I don't know, but, but yeah, it would definitely be met with a lot of criticism. That's for sure. So I, I do think, and Jake, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. I do think that one of the kind of dichotomies within chargers Twitter, it seems is like, should the chargers focus on offense or should they focus on defense? Defense was awful last year. Right. And then obviously they go get Khalil Mack, JC Jackson. Like they went and, Fix some holes there. Offense was humming last year, top five, but glaring holes at right tackle and need of speed. Like, I think the the question is, do you strengthen a strength or do you build upon a weakness to make it not as much of a weakness? Like, which one of those would you go? Uh, again, we come back to the aspect of draft value, depending on how everything falls again we're we're centralizing all around 17 if you're talking about overall dan i think that you may end up seeing a more defensive heavy draft that staley goes for given what he did last year made offense the the priority for the high rounds for him i think that's going to flip this time but if we're talking about as you said those gaping holes there's two questions you can ask on both sides of the ball obviously you have to figure out who the hell is going to be playing right tackle for the chargers come the beginning of this season the second is you still have to remember the Chargers had the worst third down defense in the league last year. So you have to find some way to bring that back to a sustainable winning style defense and give Justin Herbert more opportunities on the field offensively. So what do you do? Um, If it's me, Dan, I think 17 is going to be an offensive player. I just have it in my gut, whether it's a tackle, whether it's a wide receiver, or even as Brian, as we were saying a second ago, it could shift to guard. And their plan comes to fruition that they end up having Matt Filer go from left guard to right tackle. But I think that they're going to spend one, maybe two, possibly of their high draft picks, depending on whether or not they trade down or not, on on offense and get Justin Herbert either more protection or more weapons to contend with what they have in the AFC West. So Ryan, let's, yeah, yeah I, I kind of agree with that thinking too. And, and let's just, we'll move it along then from that. So let's say they, let's just agree at this point that they do that. They go tackle a receiver, depending who falls there. Then when you go into the third, do you think that they shift to defense or they kind of just stack whatever position they didn't take? Let, let's say they go tackle at 17. Do they get a speed receiver in the third or do you think they shift to, to defense then? Or again, and I, I, this is my belief too. I think the Chargers did enough in free agency where luckily they're not too pigeonholed. I know they have needs, obviously, like every team, but I don't think it's like such a glaring need at corner, for instance, that they have to take a corner in the top three rounds. Obviously, they would need more depth there, but they signed the JC Jackson, right? They, they, they drafted Asante Samuel Jr. Mike Davis is still currently on the roster, so at least they're not pigeonholed to do that. That being said, though, do you think they shift to that or they go offense, you know, first round, third round? It just depends, because if you look at the biggest glaring holes that the Chargers have remaining on their defense, for what everybody wants to think about Mike Williams and may say that they need another corner, but really you need to find another edge player to take over from, um, uh, oh my gosh, why am I all of a sudden forgetting his name, but you need a third, uh, not Nuosu. um, Fackrell. Thank you. Thank you. Kyler Fackrell, you need to fill the void of him, because obviously you just have Chris Rump behind Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack right now. So you still need to find another guy that can pick up some of that slack as as far as being another edge rusher on the depth chart. And then linebacker would be another one. But as far as value goes, again, I just think of weaponry here. Yeah, you went out and you got Gerald Everett in free agency. I think he'll bring a lot more to the tight end room than Jared Cook did last year. But 
look at the, it's not just two wide receivers anymore. So if you still have a good, you know, wide receiver that so happens to be there in the third round that could come in as your wide receiver three, be possibly an upgrade to Jalen Guyton is right now, be able to mix in nicely with Josh Palmer. I think that'd be a nice uh, avenue to, to cross. Otherwise, see how the ball the, uh, the board falls to you at 79. If you don't trade back, if you can't acquire any additional draft capital, you basically just kind of have to sit and wait at that point in time. And trust me, from from 17 to 79, if the Chargers don't make a move, long it's going to be a wait. long wait. A long, long wait. wait. <laughs> yeah, I totally so, agree. <laughs> what's, um, what, what do you want to take? I, 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 I remember when we did the Kenneth Murray trade. Like, that change between not having a second round pick and going from whatever it was 28 and waiting till I forget what it was like 70. Like, Oh, that was rough. If I recall, I don't think that they had a day two pick after that. Oh, I think you're right. I think you're right. They, they you had to wait till day three. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they traded two and three to go back up into one. Yeah. Um, so yeah. think about the NFL draft version of the Titanic that you had to sit through <laughs> for the better part of four hours. Yeah, the Titanic and, just, and Pearl Harbor combined. There you basically. go. There you go. <laughs> Jeez, some some real romantic drama you had to sit through. Uh, Jake, I'm glad you brought up Edge, though, because I think that's a position that at least I haven't seen getting a lot of talk about, um, but it should be. Dan, do you, and Jake kind of mentioned it, but how important do you think that is? And are there some names in the mid-round? Because obviously I, I highly doubt they go Edge in the first round, but hey, you never know if one of those big guys falls. I mean, if Caven Thibodeau has that, unbelievable fall like all of a sudden now a lot of people are talking about who knows so i was like eh, let's yeah get, okay. let's get tibbs at 17 but yes. who are some mid-name guys maybe you like so there, there's no way that tibbs falls to 17 it's just not it's not happening like that would be more of a fall than like the derwin james fall at 17 that'd be more of a fall than a rashawn slater or a santa samuel jr falling like stop um yeah. the chargers did help them out a ton Having Khalil Mack and having Joey Bosa together, I think, takes away the need to have a high-end draft pick for defensive end or edge mm-hmm. in general. So there's, I, I don't see them doing that at 17, regardless of who's actually going to be there. It's not going to be a Thibodeau. But like, let's say there's like a, I don't know, like a J- Jermaine Johnson probably Jermaine also. Johnson, yeah. Jermaine Johnson probably also won't be there. Um, but like that next tier, that second tier. I don't see them going for that because whoever that is, is not going to be better than Joy Bosa and Khalil Mack for the foreseeable future. Like they need someone who's going to impact them right now. And so in my opinion, the edge position would be like a day two, day three, maybe round four or so pick where you can get someone and you're purely wanting them as a development and depth piece. So that's where I see the edge kind of coming into fruition, just like linebacker. Like linebacker, you can get a solid linebacker in round three, round four. Like Chad Muma, if he's there, please take him. Like that's a yeah. huge impact and a huge advantage for us. I like Troy Anderson too out of Montana State. L- lower name guy. That Athletic freak. Talking about. Yeah. Linebacker is a huge position where I think that falls same with interior, interior offensive line. Like you can get a guard who can start day one, round three, round four. Tackle, not so much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... I don't know. The draft is fascinating. It's going to be so much fun to see what actually happens and, and what they do. So, um, yeah, I, I want to go through, we, we were partnering with Elias, uh, this year for, uh, you know, the stats bureau that works with ESPN and we're doing a little game with them. So I want to go through that for all of our listeners that they can play along with. But before we wrap this up, I mean, any other, any other late round prospects you guys want to talk about at all, or anyone you see the chargers mm-hmm. kind of going after or, or even just a final soapbox you want to get on that you want to see this team truly do Oof. come Thursday, Friday, Saturday, because I think last year's draft went really well. I think, you know, when you look at the course of the seven rounds, what Brandon Staley, we can tell Brandon Staley has a big say because of how differently they draft because the year before that, I would say not so great outside of Justin Herbert. I'd say not so great outside of Justin Herbert. So any final soapbox soap thoughts in our final triage pre-draft? Anyone? Go ahead, Dan. Oof. Okay. Um, so everyone who has listened to Shards Unleashed knows that we have been on the Calvin Austin train since day one. If somehow, some way, whatever the world conspires to make Calvin Austin somehow available for the Chargers, I would die a happy man, and I'm cool with it. Um, so there's a bunch of receivers, honestly, that like not many people talk about. 
And I'm like, I don't know how these guys, and again, I think it points to how deep this class is, but like there's, there's a Khalil Shakir out of Boise state who I really like. I've liked him since day one kind of has, you'd like this Jake, right? Ryan, he has like a Cooper cup vibe. He's not Cooper cup, but he has that vibe of like, he can kind of, kind of do anything he wants and get open whenever he wants. Uh, Alec Pierce out of Cincinnati. Nobody's talking about him. And I think he's going to be a stud uh, corners. I love Alante Taylor. Uh, I love Jermaine Wall out of Virginia Tech, I believe. Um, oh, K- oh, Kobe Bryant. I know. Okay, look, L.A. It's your boy. Kobe Bryant. You got to do it. Uh, there are not nearly enough people talking about him. And I know Sauce Gardner is alongside of him, has kind of put him in the shadows a bit. But this dude is going to be a great stud in the NFL. So, those are some guys I like that are probably not necessarily day one, but are probably going to be day two, day three. No, probably day two. Um, I can go on forever, but yeah, those would be some guys. Yeah, no, I, I love Kobe Bryant because it's similar to like Cordell Flott out of uh, LSU who played alongside Derek Stingley, right? Like not getting the same love, but still could be a solid player in the mid round. So, um, all right, Jake, toss it over to you for any final soapbox thoughts. I mean, ideally, my dream scenario, again, this should be no secret to anybody for what I've been clamoring down for. If you could tell me that the Chargers should trade back to at least 24 and reacquire a second-round pick, which essentially means that you got Khalil Mack for a sixth, which is just ridiculous in that circumstance. (laughs) Yes, again. And your draft probabilities as far as who you could take are now more flexible you have a better opportunity of not pigeonholing yourself into either hoping that someone drops, hoping that you need some type of Derwin James luck that has to fall into your lap at 17, as it did a few years back. And you can be multiple now. You can now work the board the way that you want to do it. And this is an extremely pivotal draft as it relates, especially when we're talking about Justin Herbert going into year three of his career. But Obviously, the offensive line has to be addressed. You need to get another weapon for Justin Herbert. You need to still fortify aspects of that defense. And in my opinion, those can be done within the first three rounds. But you have to have another home run draft the way that Brandon Staley did from rounds one through four last year. You get Rashawn Slater, you get Asante Samuel Jr., you get Josh Palmer, and you come back uh, with Trey McKitty. That was a nice solid four round block of what you have. You need to replicate that, whether it's defensively or offensively or a mixture of both, you need to do that. I'm actually interested to see, believe it or not, what day three holds because we're still looking for a running back. That's going to be able to go behind Austin Eckler. And trust Mm -hmm. me, there's plenty of guys that are in this draft that people claim as like their guy that would be just a perfect fit, whether you're talking about a Pierre Strong, a Snoop Connor, a Jerome Ford, a Ty Chandler. Personally, one of my favorites just from the standpoint of fit and familiarity. How about a Tyler Goodson out of Iowa? Considering the fact that the Chargers running back coach currently as right now was originally from Iowa (laughs) before he came Mm -hmm. on with the Chargers. So he's familiar with Tyler Goodson. And I think he had a very under the radar type of, uh, type of year for his breakout season and tested in the 97th percentiles among running backs. So um, yeah, day three is going to be really interesting on how they're going to plug up the little gaps. But if you can stomach it, if you can hit a home run at 17, that'd be great. If you can trade back from 17, get a little bit more draft capital, also great. But that gap between 17 and 79, depending on who the Chargers pick at 17, is either going to feel great (laughs) <laughs> because you're so high off of who the Chargers got at 17, or it's going to be a really long nightmare wait to see who's <laughs> remaining there at 79. I have, I have a question. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is kind of your rapid fire, but <clears throat> so let's say to two scenarios, actually let's do three scenarios. You have three different guys to pick here. Chargers stay at 17. Who's your dream scenario pick chargers move up and like trade up to whatever, pick your spot. Who's your dream pick? Chargers trade back. Who is your pick? Three guys. Go ahead, Jake. You can start. Dream scenario for me. It's a great question. Though. Pro- would probably be either Charles Cross or Jameson Williams, specifically from the standpoint that I don't believe that they're either one of them are going to be there by 17. 
Charles Cross would probably be the one guy that I would say that I would be okay trading up for. Jamison Williams, no, just from the standpoint of how deep this wide receiver class is. And again, we're looking for a wide receiver three here to come in and complement Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. And your last one, Dan, was trade back. Ideal scenario, who you could grab if you trade back. So let's just say that the Chargers traded with the Dallas Cowboys at 24, which value circumstance-wise, anything from 24 beyond would actually end up netting you a second-round pick. 24 at that standpoint, if Zion Johnson was still on the board, hell yeah, man. That's a home run for me. You acquire a second-round pick and you fortify your offensive line, I'll take all that. Yeah, uh, for me, sitting sitting pat, dream scenario, just because the way I've seen mock drafts go, obviously they can be way different, but it seems like a, a Zion Johnson or even a Jamison Williams have the potential to be there. I think Jamison Williams will probably end up going top 10, but it seems to be fluctuating a lot. So that's who I would like to say. Those two are kind of my, my staying pat there. Um, would be fine with the Trent McDuffie also, I think, if they just sit there moving up. And if we're going all the way up, I love Sauce Gardner. That'd be kind of my dream. I just think I know tackles a bigger need because of, as I've said before, what they did in the offseason. But I think if you have for the foreseeable future, JC Jackson, a Sauce Gardner, and Asante Samuel Jr., you don't only, only have a great secondary, you have an elite secondary with Derwin James, like probably the best in the NFL in a Brandon Staley system. And you've already added to the defensive line to help the run defense. So that'd be kind of my dream move up and move back scenario. Um, you know, if, if again, if Zion Johnson falls that far, I think that's obviously a slam dunk. If you move back, uh, I've, I'll just, I, I, I am high on him. I think Devin Lloyd would be a fine pick. If you were able to get that second round pick back, uh, and get a guy like Devin Lloyd at 24, 25, which has seen where he's mocked. Or lastly, I think a Kyer Elam is also a, a solid corner there. They could get uh, later in the draft uh, that I think would be solid there. So but the last thing I'll say there before you answer Dan is, you know, what everyone needs to realize is these mock drafts all go mute after those first three picks. Oh, yeah. Chaos ensues. Like we could, <laughs> yeah. you know, I've seen some max that don't have a single quarterback go in the first 20 picks. And I've seen some that have four goes. So it's just, it's going to be chaos as always. And uh, that's what I can't wait for. <laughs> I tell uh, like the chaos ensues. I'm just, I'm ready for that. Like there really wasn't that much chaos last year in the draft. Like the, the, the one thing that happened was Rashawn Slater fell, but they were really like two picks that kind of made that happen. Yeah. There's so many variables this year that you can see stuff from left field all day long. Cause um, there's no true number one. Like every year there's a true, like either a quarterback or someone that's like, okay, that's the slam dunk. Number one this year. Now we're seeing a, a shift at number one, which is crazy. There is no true top 10. Like there's yeah. no, like there is no, there's a scenario where a quarterback shouldn't be taken in the first round. Like yeah. there's no first round top, but you know, someone's going to, it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, all right. To answer the question, Stay put at 17 dream scenario of of who could actually be there. I would probably say, Oh, uh, Jordan Davis would be a hope. Um, And then I'll just say, I'll say Jordan Davis trading up. um, Honestly, I'd be cool with them trading up for Stingley or for James Williams. Obviously James Williams are 17. I'm running. Uh, And then trading back. Oof. I like Kyer Elam. I really like him. He's my CB3, I believe, on my board. Uh, I would do Kyer Elam, potentially a Chris Olave if he's still there, but whether or not he's there or not, who knows? Those would be my picks. Man, but hey, I'm honestly, I'm all aboard trading up this year. Why not? Why not at this Why point? Not? All right, last question before we go to this Elias thing. It could be quick. Chargers stay pat at 17. Worst case scenario. Who is the player you will be absolutely... Say his name. Lose your mind if they take him at 17. Before you say Trevor Penning, <laughs> like, is there someone that would be worse than him? Realistically, obviously, if they went for like, I don't know, Abraham Lucas at 17, you'd be like, what the hell? But like, is there someone who realistically people are high on that you're like, eh, well, that would be worse? <sighs> <laughs> That's hard to find that one. Yeah. You know, it really is. It really is. Like maybe some people wouldn't say that Devontae Wyatt's were 17, but it's still, it, it wouldn't garner as much hatred as, as Charter's Twitter has for Trevor Penning right now. Um, no, honestly, I, I couldn't see that. I think, I think if you had, if you had Trevor Penning, it's more hatred. If it's Devin Lloyd, it's more confusion. 
<laughs> still not ideal picks for either one. It's like yeah. Trevor Penning's up here, and then Devin Lloyd would be all the way down here as far as the, the feelings matrix. So Trevor Penning is your answer, obviously. All right, Dan. Who's, That's who's, the answer. Who, yeah. <sighs> Honestly, that's tough. Um, who would I hate? Like, realistically, I, Jake and I have talked about this before. There are probably like 20, 22 guys that I think I would be okay with the Chargers picking at 17. Where, where like, I would at least like, under, like, I would at least understand it. But, like, if they were to reach for, like, I don't know. Um, like, for example, I love Trent McDuffie. And I would rather have him than Penning. Put that right mm-hmm. now. But, like, I do think that Trent McDuffie, as much as I like him, I think he's the safe pick. And I don't necessarily know if that's a bad thing, one. But, two, I don't think that aligns to what Staley's doing. Like, yes, he aligns to the scheme. But in terms of, like, aggressiveness, that's a safe pick. And I don't think that aligns to what Staley and Tlesco are doing. Um, so, like a Devin Lloyd... McDuffie would kind of bring confusion to me because I wouldn't be like, all right, are we aggressive? Are we not aggressive? Are we playing for fit? Are we playing best player available? I don't know. Yeah. 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 I think mine, and this is probably gets, uh, let me say this. I don't think there'd be anyone that I would, would hate. I think, like I've said many times, I think they've done enough in free agency where it can go a number of different directions. Probably I could probably get on the Trevor Penning board too, that I just think it's, it's maybe a little, of red flags there, but if I'm just throwing a different name out and I'll probably get screwed as for this, but I might go Chris Alave. I just, I like other receivers a lot more than Alave. Obviously if four of the others are gone and he's the last one and the tackles are gone, I obviously won't hate the pick. Um, but I just think there's better value there at 17 when they can get a speed type receiver later in the draft. They can, I just don't think Alave brings enough to warrant that high of a pick where a guy where he, he's not going to be, he's not a fit for the charge necessarily, but a guy like Drake London or Jamison Williams just changes things so much. I don't see a lava as I think he's a great player. I think he'll have a good career, but I don't think you have a guy that is scheme. I don't know if he's scheme dependent, but you're going to use him schematically certain in certain ways as your first round pick that I just, Wolken- I I'm, I'm harder on receivers than most too, though. Wolkenstein. I never thought that you would try to use our dear Ryan to, <laughs> get your hatred out for Chris Olave in a much different way. So what did you do? <laughs> How no much did you pay him? Me. What notes did you slip him? What the hell, dude? <laughs> I, was, I was literally just sitting here. And I'm like, wow, Ryan, like preach. Um, so I've come around there. There were a few weeks, arguably months where I was like fully against Olave at 17. And I would have agreed with you. Um, I think what I've realized is from a BPA perspective, in my eyes, Alave is not a 17th overall pick. He just isn't, in my opinion. Uh, Late first round grade, yes. But if the Chargers feel that they are a wide receiver three away and they want someone who has speed and can get separation and contribute right away, I would understand the Alave pick and I would understand the reach to go get Alave at 17. But if they're telling me that they're going BPA, it's not Chris Alave. Like, just don't lie to me. Like, just tell me you want to get that guy that will help Justin Herbert. And he's the speedy guy. He's the best one available at that position. Okay. I can get behind that. But if you're telling me that Chris Alave is a better prospect than like, I don't know, uh, Jordan Davis or uh, Trent McDuffie in terms of like immediate impact on this team. I'm not buying it. <laughs> yeah. And that's just my thing. I, I like Chris Olave, So it's not, it would not be a hate at all. I just think there's better yes. value there. And, and when I watched a lot of Ohio state games, it seemed like every game pregame, it was like, Oh, got to watch for Chris Olave. Like see what this guy does. And every game it was Garrett Wilson and Jackson Smith and Jigba that had better games than, than Chris Olave. He was kind of the third option, which is saying something considering how good that receiving core and how good that offense was. But when I look at a guy like Jameson Williams or especially Drake London and Traylon Burks, like they were their offensive firepower on those big power schools. And, and Chris Olave was essentially a third option, which I just don't see. I, Hey, if they get him later, absolutely fantastic. But at 17, I just, I just think the value is higher, but. 
That's it's really hard percent. for me to hold back my spark. But I know, Jake and Ryan, we have all of those Elias Sports Bureau picks. So why don't we have some fun with that? Let's roll through it. Yeah. So partnering with Elias Sports Bureau, you know, the best fact. I don't know, we know what you call them. I guess uh, fa- encyclopedia with facts. They, they supply ESPN with all their facts, and they're partnering with us for the draft, and we were able to create a fun game for them. So if you are watching on YouTube or on LAFB Network on our stream there, you can just scan. We got two QR codes showing up here. One has a, a bunch of prop bets we created with Pickup that's a lot of fun to play, and one is going to have this Elias game. If you're listening, uh, you can actually text in LAFB Draft to the number 31032, and that'll take you right there to play, and you'll be entered to win an LAFB t-shirt. So you can't go wrong with that. So let's. Uh, I'm going to pull up a screen grab here. Who wants to be the, the one that gets the credit here, Jake or Dan? Oh, it's definitely Dan. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's definitely okay. Dan. Dan the man. Okay, here we go. So let's go, Dan. Well, I guess everyone's going to see your email, Dan. So Cool. If you, if you, if you need anything. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty easy to feel guess free, if you work with DM, LA feel, Network. Feel free to DM me for inquiries or just go there. For all the uh, for all of the Chris Olave enthusiasts that mm. want to reach out to Dan for his hatred for Chris Olave, this is where you can find him. There you go. You're welcome. Perfect place. So, again, scan the QR code on the stream or text LAFB draft to 31032 to uh, join this game and enter winner's shirt. All right, gentlemen, you can both answer though. Who's going to be the number one overall pick? Aiden Hutchinson, Traven Walker, or someone else? I won't read all the insights. People playing can read that. I don't need to take all that time. You know what the wildest thing about this question is? Dan, I know this is yours to answer. I just had to put this out there because I can't remember who it was that tweeted it. But it made so much damn sense because he said, I would not be surprised given the Jacksonville Jaguars as far as their positioning, bulky, everything like that for their move at number one, if they went Garrett Wilson. And I, my response was, you know what? <laughs> given, the re- given the contract that they gave Chris- Christian Kirk, I wouldn't be surprised by that either if they did something crazy. Trevor Walker is now the odds-on favorite as it stands right now in Las Vegas to be the number one overall pick taken. Wild. Wild. And that would just be... I mean, obviously not to people like Peter Schrager and a couple others, but that to me would just be wild. Overpassing a guy like Aiden Hutchinson and Kayvon Thibodeau from a guy who tested athletically out of the roof for the combine, but for a guy who's not known for rushing the passer and you're taking him number one overall, I don't think they're that crazy. So it's Aiden Hutchinson to me. Yeah, I would agree. I think it's Aiden Hutchinson. And if, if it is Trayvon Walker, that is the biggest reach in terms of like projection and just putting all your chips on what they could be versus what they are now. So to answer your question, I have Aiden Hutchison, but man, that'd be crazy. <laughs> Trayvon yeah. Walker ended up getting, that'd be the biggest uh, skyrocket I've seen in drafts yep. in quite some time. Paralysis by over analysis. That's what that would be. If, if Walker into the pick Uh fun fact, the last edge rusher taken first overall was 2017 when it was miles Garrett. All right. Will an offensive player be drafted with the top three pick would assume that'd be probably one yes. of the tackles. Yes. Um, but could be a receiver sneak in there too. hundred percent. Yes. There's no way offensive tackle is not taken the top three picks. There's no way. There you go. According to DraftKings. uh, Ekawana do you agree, Jake? Do you disagree? Evan Neal's minus 115. I mean, do I think it should be like that? Let's just say Aiden Hutchinson is the number one guy overall. So number two, what do you do? We've seen we've seen Sauce Gardner, Dan, mocked to Detroit. We've seen Kayvon Thibodeau, obviously, mocked to Detroit. But, damn, I've heard mock drafts of it being defense, defense, defense in the first three. I mean, do I think that's the right way to go? But Houston needs so much. Houston's really mm-hmm. the wild card in all this that could change everything. So I'll say yes for now, but I don't think it's as locked in of a of uh, you right. know, I, I don't think it's as locked in as we may think it is with one, two, three. Yeah, I mean, and Detroit needs so much too. I just I just did a, a mock this morning and all the first five picks were all defense. So never know, but we'll, we'll go with yes on this one. All right. Who will be the first quarterback drafted Malik Willis, Kenny Pickett or someone else? Willis. This is really difficult because if you talk about just 
overall athletic upside, Willis is this guy hands down. If you're talking about a guy who's ready to step in day one and be somewhat mm-hmm. productive for you, this is where Kenny Pickett's been getting so much play. I still think Willis gets the nod here. I just think his his the athletic testing from a quarterback standpoint, and especially when you see that that's the way that the league is going, I think that's going to hold a lot much more weight for him. Quick, quick follow up, and we'll do it quick. Do you think any of these quarterbacks get drafted to a team where they want them to start day one, or has every team kind of positioned themselves to say, oh, "We all have a bridge guy, and we're going to draft and, and see if we can develop this guy into someone better"? I don't think so. I think may, may- Carolina, maybe <laughs> Carolina, maybe. maybe. Yeah. Yeah, Carolina Pie has a true QB competition. That's that's QB competition for sure. But I don't think they would expect him to start. And then I think Pittsburgh got Trubisky, so I think you got a good kind of security blanket there. Yeah, I think New every Orleans. team does. Yeah. All right. How many quarterbacks drafted in round round one? Two or fewer? Three or more? Fun fact: Since 2010, five quarterbacks have been drafted at pick 25 or later, including Heisman Trophy winner Lamar Jackson. This year, this quarterback class is just not good. <laughs> uh, if you would ask me this a month ago, I would have said three or more. But the closer and closer we get, I think it's going to be two or fewer. I think it's going to be two. I'm going to go the opposite way, Ryan. I'm going to say it's going to be three or more, specifically for that fact that you brought up. You're going to see teams that passed on a quarterback in round, in the early part of round one now mm-hmm. work to trade back up from anywhere from 25 to 32. I could see someone trading back up in there for – a Ritter or no, it's probably Ritter would be the only other option for Ritter, the third quarter. Sam I Howell think. maybe. Yeah. All right. Well, since this is Dan's challenge, we'll go with two, but I kind of agree with, I, I think there'll be three or more personally as well, just because there's always chaos in that regard. Uh, will the Steelers draft a quarterback in round one to succeed at Roethlisberger? Yes. So they are at pick um, 20. 20. Yeah. I'll say yes. Yes. I, I think, that would probably be smart of them. Uh, who will be the first defensive back drafted? Sauce, Sauce. Gardner, Derek Stingley, Kyle mm, Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton. So include in there because he's a safety or someone else. Mm. No, I think it's going to be Sauce. You think it's going to be Sauce still? I'm going to say that it's going to be a little bit of a surprise. And with all of the good health results coming back on one Derek Stingley, I think someone's going to pull the trigger. Mm. Go Stingley. I mean, the Chargers look, trading Stingley, up. Stingley is my CB one. So you want to go Stingley, or you, you want to stick with Sauce? No, I think there. I think someone's going to go Sauce. But if it was me, I'm going to go. I would go Stingley. But okay. Sauce, we'll go, we'll go Sauce just because this is yours. I'll be we- like the devil's advocate on Dan's <laughs> shoulder for all these questions. There you go. Perfect. Will a team currently without a top ten pick trade into the top ten on draft mm. night? Intent Chargers potentially. In seven, while you're thinking, in seven of the last ten drafts, a team that entered the night with its first pick coming at number eleven or later traded in to the top ten. Seven of the last ten, so definitely has chances. But again, this is a very weak uh, quarterback class. Usually, those trades were going up to get a quarterback. Jake, what do you? Th- I'll, let, I'll let you take this one. I well, I'll give you another line. I I put the line at four four trades in the first round alone, and I'm pounding the over over under four. And yes, I think from the very fact of what we were talking about earlier with the fact that there's no consensus at Mm -hmm. so many different positions as far as who is their number one guy. Can you imagine what all the war rooms for every team have as far as what their draft boards look like and where the names are? So 100%, I I definitely see somebody trying to move into the top 10 to get their guy. (laughs) Hopefully not the Chargers. (laughs) I agree with you. I think, yeah, there's going to be some crazy fall and someone's going to move up to nine and, and get that guy. All right, we got a Chargers question. What will the Chargers do with pick 17? We kind of already talked about it, but now we can put uh, money where our mouth is. Offense, defense, trade the pick. So, Jake, I believe you had said they were going to be going offense. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm going to go I'm going to go offense as well. I think they go offense. Unless... No, I'm going to go offense because I just don't see a Stingley falling and Davis is the only other person that they would take. Okay, so no trade? Nope. Mine's a combination of A and C. It's trade back (laughs) and take an offensive player. (laughs) Please. (laughs) 
<laughs> All right, we'll we'll go with offense for now. Um, almost done here. Three left. Will the Chiefs draft a wide receiver in round one to replace Tyreek Hill? How about the Packers and Devonta Adams? So I guess a two-part question here. Well, I know I would I would put a solid amount of money. No, I'll put six packs. I'll put a solid amount of six packs that one of these two teams are going to be going wide receiver in, in the first round. The Packers got two picks and the chiefs. They, I think they need a receiver. Um, yeah, so well, definitely very late. That's their, that's their disadvantage there. Packers have 22 and 28 and the chiefs have 29 and 30. I think both go receiver with one of the, with two, with each have two picks. One's going to be a receiver. So, uh, so the top both one. go wide receiver in round one. Jake, anything to add? Javon Walker was the last wide receiver that was taken by the Packers. And God, I can't remember what year that was, but that's how long it's been since they have taken. It's actually a skill player, I think, a wide receiver yeah. or a running back, and he was the last of that particular group. So In I think it's one. more likely, yes, I think it's more likely the Packers would actually trade up to get their guy, considering the fact that you don't have Devontae Adams, you don't have Marquez Valdez Scantling, you need a playmaker now. So if your target is one of the big four or the big five, Kansas City has a little bit more of a luxury. They can wait until 29 to get a guy that can round out their group. But yeah, I think both of them go wide receiver in the first. Yeah, it'll be, you would think they would, but we'll uh, we'll see, especially with those stats of how, and, and the Chiefs did, I, I mean, you lose Tyreek Hill, obviously can't replace him, but they did add MV, uh, Mar- Marquez Valtez, Scanley. They did add, um, Juju Smith-Schuster as well. So it's not like they have no receivers, but it'll be interesting to see. All right, last two here. Where will USC star wide receiver Drake London get drafted? Top 10 outside the top 10. I'm actually mm. interested to hear your take on this one, Ryan. I, I, you know, I the sweet spot for him is like 10, right, with the Jets. I think he's a great fit for the Jets who need a true number one receiver, especially if they want to get more help for Zach Wilson. Um, but I, I could see him going to Atlanta. If the Atlanta doesn't go quarterback, I could see him going to the Giants. Uh, Seattle, if they, they decide they would do want to trade DK Metcalf or they want to just pair DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and Drake London. So, uh, but also 11. I mean, he really that 8 through 12, is really interesting to me. To me, he's my my wide receiver one by a long shot. So I, I'll say inside the top ten, I think he goes. I'll go but with it. Dan, but this is Dan Sheets. I'll so go with it. Answer. No, we'll go with it. This is a joint effort. I'll go with inside the top ten. Toby, a top ten pick. All right. I hope so. He was at the spring game I was at on Saturday making a guest appearance. So ah. hats off to that kid. Super good kid. Um, final two. Will a running back be drafted in round one? Yes. Really, Dan? There's all. Really? There's always one. There's always one. Always one. I'm just trying to think of who possibly could do it. Thinking anywhere from 25 to 32. The Lions at 32. <laughs> <laughs> they got Swift. I. I just can't see it happening. I mean, do I give it a chance? Yeah, but if I was to bet money on it, and as far as who's going to still be left on the board, no. No, I can't. I mean, imagine the Bills go with like That's, that. Maybe have been the one yeah. team that I could see doing, but even still, I I couldn't see them doing that. Yeah, okay. it's tough. I think someone's gonna do it. Someone's gonna do guess, it. Yes. Okay. Seems like there is always one sneaks in there. Final question: What type of suit will the first player drafted be wearing? Solid color, striped, patterned, or not a suit? T-shirt tuxedo, maybe? I don't know what uh, they're going for there, but... <sighs> All the marbles. So let's see. So like Rashawn Slater last year, he had like the the pattern, the blue, if I remember right. Yeah. yeah. No one goes solid colors anymore, I feel like. It's always some sort of design or, or stripe paisley or something. Ooh, paisley. So that would that be... That'd be patterned, I think. Pattern. It's like auto pattern. Got to think... Eight. Think of what Kevin Thibodeau, Aiden Hutcherson, or Trevon Walker would be wearing. I think they all seem like flashy guys, right? I don't know if Hutchinson uh, Aiden Hutchinson so might. He'll might, probably just yeah. be go solid. But solid the other Navy. guys, I think they would probably go a little bit more pattern. Definitely if it was, you know, if they end up turning the t- tides on us and go offensive tackle number one overall. Evan Neal or Nicky Kikwamu, yeah. I can see wearing a nice pattern. Definitely. Uh, you know, a Kayvon Thibodeau, 100% there, or a Trayvon Walker. I could see any of them wearing mm-hmm. patterns. 
Sauce. <laughs> Sauce. Sauce, <laughs> Sauce, man. Sauce would come in with like a whole different combination and create a whole new style. He's wearing shorts. Right. <laughs> well, well, not a suit. There you go. All right. Well, there we go. We'll go patterns. So uh, we'll see how you do. You can keep track. We'll get a bunch of people in here again. If you are listening, text LAFB draft to 31032. You get entered to win an LAFB shirt. Or if you're watching, just scan one of the QR codes. Gentlemen, it was a pleasure as always. Uh, joined by Dan Wolkenstein, Jake Hefner of Chargers Unleashed. Can't wait for the draft to be this week. Thank you for joining me talking some Chargers football. We'll see how it plays out. I'm sure there'll be a lot of nerves at the, the Hefner draft yeah. party. Excited yes, to see uh, the emotions coming there and talking to you guys all week. So, Dan, Jake, thanks for joining me as always. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ryan. Thank Appreciate you so it. much for having us. Guys. Have fun in Vegas, man. <laughs> We'll do. We'll, we'll be talking and corresponding the whole week. So hopefully, uh, and you gotta, Jake, you have to, if you come on our recap show, you gotta be wearing a bathrobe and have like a pipe. Gotta do it for once. <laughs> oh, my give me friend, the Hefner look. I already have the costume from years past on the first Halloween that I met my wife. So it's ready to go. If you request it, I will wear it. No problem. Okay. Well, we'll judge it based on who the Chargers pick at 17. It'll yes. Be either, it'll be an elation good, or in sorrow. You'll get it. If okay. it's not, you'll wear. I'll wear something much more depressing. <laughs> there we go. Love it. So, gentlemen, thank you. Chargers Unleashed. Make sure to check them out on the LA Football Network. This is the LA Football Show. I'm Ryan Dyrud, and we'll talk to you guys all week long. Got the draft for you right here. Talk soon.